looking funky fresh dressed to impress ready to party all right, check it out, check it in, HNIC Podcast. Today we have Miss Jamana here, businesswoman. I don't always like to uh, do too much talking about their business. I like them to introduce their business themselves. So go ahead and tell us about your business. All right, y'all. So as you said, my name is Jamana. Now, I will tell you, most people call me Joe. So when you look on my website, when you see J-H-O-E, don't be confused. It's the same exact person. And I started a positive lifestyle brand called Keep It Vertical, which means keep your spirit lifted. And the foundation of my positive lifestyle brand is a poetry book that I self-published titled DCFS, which some people might be familiar with because it's also the acronym for the Department of Children and Family Services. I grew up in the foster care system. And my dad was going through my grandmother's garage one day and had found a bunch of old poems that I wrote, like a big ass suitcase full of poetry that I wrote. And there was these one, this one like real dark ass, like, black ass segment about suicide and depression because that was something that I struggled with when I was in the foster system and I wrote about it a lot so I took all of those poems I put them into my published book delicately caring for savages because I feel like poetry is a delicate way to express feelings no matter how savage or dark they may be and it is some really dark poetry but it stopped me from wanting to do things that would be way more harmful than that you know and it was a sense of expression for me but I wanted people to know that I don't just say keep it vertical, keep your spirit lifted because that shit is cute. But like I've been through some things, I've been in hard times, but despite all that, despite where I came from, despite what I've been through, despite the shit I wrote in my book, I do believe that if with positive practices in our lifestyle, if we keep our spirit lifted, we're going to be all right. So I sell merchandise that has positive messages on them, positive images to just uplift the people and let them know it don't matter where you came from or what you've been through. Like, if you want to be okay, if you want to change and you want a positive lifestyle, just day by day, little by little, you change that. And then you can become the person and create the lifestyle that you want. Oh, man, so. you on the same wavelength as me. Like, that's a big reason why we even started this. And you actually, like, t- touched on stuff that I was going to ask you. I was going to tell you the uh, how was it like growing up in L.A. and, and things like that. You kind of already tapped on that. But can you just go into a little bit more, like, uh, uh, where you come from, what city, what area, and, and how you were raised. All right, yeah. So, ironically, when people ask me where I'm from, I always say Palmdale. But I was born in Los Angeles. Now, the only reason I say Palmdale is because when I went into the foster care system at nine, I went to Palmdale. Now, I, my first foster home was some, like, lady in Torrance. So, I was here for a minute. But I quickly went to my family's house in Palmdale. And that's where I grew up from, like, nine to 16, which to me is, like, some very developmental years in your life. So I spent those years in Palmdale, California, which I feel like attributes a lot to kind of who I am today. And then I moved to LA at 16. And it's so interesting because I don't really talk about this much, but you asked me how I grew up. And coming to LA at 16 from a place where I didn't really see Black people that much, and I seen a bunch of Black people, it was like culture shock to me. I was like, wow. Like, so it was such a, I grew up completely different I would say than who I am now given that I grew up I spent 16 to 30 where I am now like in LA and more into the culture so that's that was how I grew up it was I moved around a lot uh because of like the foster care situation when I was in Torrance and I came to Palmdale then we went to Lancaster and then when I went to college I went to Santa Barbara because I was already used to kind of moving around I was like I just want to go anywhere I can then I went to college in Santa Barbara in Santa Barbara, like the two or three hours away, Santa Barbara? Yeah, the two or three hours away, Santa Barbara. I went to UC Santa Barbara. Uh, I was there for about a year and a half before coming back to Los Angeles, which is where I started the roots of my business, like being in L.A. I like Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara is nice. Santa Barbara is nice, and if you go to school there, it's really lit. I can't I can't attest for what it might be today, but when I went there, Santa Barbara was Santa Barbara <laughs> Yeah, it's like a it's like a surf town kind of huh? yeah it's very party city as well like the halloween is three days long they block off the freeway like nobody can come in that's not already in the land for halloween because it gets really crazy so santa barbara is lit though this is very expensive for me yeah time. it's expensive but a lot of celebrities and stuff like have vacation homes and stuff like that in santa barbara absolutely and God willing, one day, maybe if I decide I would like to still be there, but in them days, I was like, it, it was expensive for college, so then I transferred, I I took a year hiatus trying to figure out what I wanted to do in my life, <laughs> and 
And I think that's kind of where I started realizing that I wanted to do something with business. I just didn't know what, because I spent that whole year away from Santa Barbara because it got too expensive trying to figure out, so what am I going to do with my life? (laughs) And people kept saying, you'll be good at business, you'll be good at business. And I tried like Mary Kay, Herbalife, just selling other people's stuff to try to get the tactics down. And I realized in that hiatus and me trying to figure out what I want to do in my life and pursuing different business styles, I can't sell nothing that I didn't create. I can't sell nobody else's products. Like I couldn't tell y'all to go buy. I could like advise people to do things that I do that I like, but I'm not passionately running the streets. Like, hey, y'all get this lip gloss that Mary Kay made it because I don't feel connected to something I didn't create. That's important you said that since we're talking about business too, because uh, we're noticing, well, I'm noticing specifically that, um, you know how we have like a lot of retailers and stuff like that. So if you have like a small, like mom and pop store, you, you buy from the bigger company and you buy it at a wholesale price. And what's happening now in today's market where uh, we have a lot of online shopping. So the, the need for those middlemen retailers is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So like, business people are having to become more and more creative in, in order to survive. Yeah, absolutely. Especially because the, like the mega companies that you talk, that you're talking about, they have big distrib- like distribution deals with companies that like target Walmart companies yeah, that can get their name out there because I walked into the grocery store looking for cheese and wow, I saw these candles, you know? So we have to do so much more to be uh, seen and exposed. But I think, in relation to that, because I have partnered with some really big names that I, that to me, even when I think about it, like Fathom Me, like for instance, just to not name dropping, but to say what I've done. No, um, I partnered with MasterCard. Leaders. You know, we you feel me? I partnered with MasterCard. Be inspired by you. Thank you. <laughs> I've partnered with MasterCard. Um, I've also been featured on KTLA. And if anybody's ever been to the MOCA Museum, uh, the Museum of Contemporary Art, my clothes were featured inside of their store. So if you go to the if you go to the museum and you go into the pop up shop where you can buy the trinkets, at one point in time you can get a keep a vertical shirt from the museum. Now, in relation to the exposure that we're talking about for small brands like myself, is really building connection because I used to freelance, and if you know anything about freelancing, you don't got no job unless you find the like you have to go out and find your job. And what I did was I would work all the conventions in LA. So like the auto show, the trucking convention, the anime expo, through these companies, I would work these events. And I was freelance to work at a store in Century City. And the store was contracted by the mayor of Los Angeles. He had a store full of brands that were starting their business in LA because he wanted to encourage people to keep their money in the city. I worked at this store for about a year and I started going out with them when they would do vending events. And one day I said, I want to get a deal with these people. Like this is the mayor of Los Angeles. It's a store full of brands that were started in LA. I'm a little girl from LA. I want a business with, I want a brand with these people. And I would come to the store because I worked there and I would hang my shirts up and I would just listen to how people would respond to my designs, my logos. Um, The store had a completely different margin of people than the people that I lived around. So I wanted to get their insight on what they thought about the design. So I would just hang it up and listen to how people would respond. And in such manifest in that relationship, I just found like a contact. I asked myself, how do you get in this store? And as a business owner, you cannot be afraid to reach out to people and be like, how did you get in this store? How did you do this? How did you create this? If I want to be a part of this, what do I have to do? Like, Get on your knees, goddamn it. Who cares? Because at this point, that connection has gotten me so far. I could have never put myself on KTLA Morning News. Like, what? Because I don't know anybody there. But I asked the mayor, how do you get into the store? I met with somebody in the office. Since then, I think I've been in partnership with them for about three years. And through that connection, that's how I was reached out to by MasterCard. That's how I was featured on the news. That's how my clothes were in the museum. And it was just based on one connection that I built and I maintained for years and years and years. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, let's see. Um, what, what, what steps did you take when you first wanted to start your business, like from, from ground zero, when you said, okay, I'm, I'm going to start a business? What's the first thing you did? <sighs> okay, now, so I, I mean, and I'm going to only say this because I think for me it was a little backwards. 
Um, I was always going to church and people would like talk to me and pray over me and be like, you a businesswoman. I never, ever, 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 ever in my life wanted to start a business. I'm going to tell you that now. I didn't grow up thinking I was going to start a business. I wanted to just be, initially I was like, I just want to be a therapist. I just want to talk to people. Um, but people kept saying, you'll be so good in business, so good in business. And then one day I said, why do people keep saying this to me? Maybe they know something I don't. And so from that, from me trying to figure out why did God keep having these people say this to me? That's when I just started pursuing Mary Kay and Herbalife. I didn't try to initially start my own business because I just wanted to learn how business works. So I can say when I decided to start a business, I just decided to learn everything that I can, whether I went to workshops or what I did at that time, which was I just found the closest fucking pyramid scheme I could attach myself to. <laughs> And That's okay though. Damn pyramid, but it taught me like exactly. customer it service and packaging, and and that's when I knew I can't sell nothing that don't belong to me. I even tried to sell life insurance. Like I was just trying to get the knowledge and. Gotta learn how to run the business before you run the business. Yeah, a lot of people they get a job in the field that they want to do business in, so they get like paid learning experience. That way, when they do jump ship, they you know they got all the knowledge and stuff. So that actually wasn't that was a good move actually. Yeah. Thank you. I never thought about it like that because I, I never I never connected it until you started asking me, like, what did I what was my first move when I wanted to start a business? That's what I thought about. It. I was like, I never connected that. So thank you. all I'm getting all insight and stuff about me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how did you actually start the business like day one? You like, let's get it going. How did you start? OK, That's so after you left Mary Kay and all these other places. Mm -hmm. So. In relation to keep it vertical, my very first business that I started was uh, was actually called Women Warren for Christ. It was a faith based brand, and um, I keep it vertical was my Instagram name. And I was driving down the street one day, and I said, "Keep it vertical." And I would just I, I, I just said it to myself, and it's been my Instagram name for a year. So I said, "Keep it up, stay prayed up, never give up." And those are the three things that clicked in my head from my Instagram name. And I said, I'm about to switch my whole business. And I said, if keep it up, stay prayed up and never give up are the three things that pop in my head. Those were the first three ideals and the pillars that I wanted to start my business. Keep it up. I wanted to make sure that I was motivating people because I didn't know if I was going to do clothes. I didn't know if I was going to speak. This is just me going off the name and the idea that I had when I was driving my car. I remember I was driving down the one thing freeway. I said, keep it up. I want to motivate people. Stay prayed up. I want to make sure that I let people know through God manifestation, through speaking and believing, you could do whatever you need to do. And then never give up. I want to talk about what I did and what stopped me from giving up in all those times that I was homeless and divorced and all the times that I was going through suicidal thoughts and depression. So the first thing that I did was I decided what my name meant and how I would connect that to the business I wanted to start. Cause like, I, I didn't know if it would be closed, but I had my name I had those three pillars, and from there, I was like, "What do I want to do with that?" Okay, it sound like you had the uh, you are you did have it in you. Sound like it. I remember you used to save um, receipts and stuff like that. You used to have a Ziploc bag full of receipts. I don't know. You still do that? No, I actually found a way to simplify that. Thank God for technology, um, <laughs> where it's just through an app already connected, and my receipts and all of my payments come to my phone and I could just okay. itemize them that way. That's so funny that you remember that because woo, that's when I, you know, that's the beginning stages. Where that's you, where that's you just why I'm bringing it up. <laughs> that's why I'm bringing it up. All right. Yeah, everybody starts somewhere. That, But that's usually the hardest part for people is because they don't know, like, and then they get discouraged. Like, I can't do this. It's too bad. That's part of the reason why we want to start this because that like starting a business is not easy and then maintaining a business is not easy and uh, a lot of times we can get discouraged and if we have enough uh people and uh, there's a lot of people i know actually including you and it's like they're doing this stuff and we want people to see like no you can do it like and we need to lean on each other for support so uh with that being said my next question for you is what do you do for inspiration when times get rough and when you feel like that like oh like the, the reason why we're trying to inspire people and stuff like that so when, when when things go bad what do you do for inspiration how do you get through it do you listen to like motivate i listen to motivational like youtube or some some crap like that to get me hyped up hey that was worse though that ain't even no crap hey then people be <laughs> screaming through them speakers you be like dang I'm <laughs> <You're> talking <laughs> 
you be feeling like that's really in your ear. Now I do I do something that's a little bit more um I don't know what you I don't know what you would call it, um, related to myself. I go through my messages and I read the shit that people tell me about what I've done for them, you know. Um, because I get people that message me and they'll say something like, um, like true stories. I had somebody who found out their friend passed away and they had on to keep a vertical shirt when they found out. And she said it made her, it alleviated a little bit of the pain to have that positive message on her while she received some mess, something like that. Um, I had a girl that lost her baby. She uh, had a miscarriage and she told me she came to my page and she was just reading my post and that made her feel better. So people come to me and they tell me that, somebody told me that I sent out an email one time that changed the way she lived her life. And she told me that to my face. I went to my school one day and this was the receptionist at my school. So I always think about the thing that people tell me that I do for them. That doesn't necessarily big up me, but it creates power in my mission so that I know I can't stop because there's more people just like that waiting to hear me, waiting for me to tell them that you're going to be all right. Wait on, on me to tell them like, yeah, you've been through depression. Yeah. You probably felt like your parents didn't want you, but I guarantee you one, that's not the case. And two, you can do this to get over those situations. So I really go back to what my lifted family has to say. Like I rely and that my lifted family is my community of people. Um, I rely and depend on them so much. <laughs> Let's and talk about like, that. The lifted family. You want to hear about that? Yeah, it's my squad. So my subscribers, my customers, of my followers on Instagram. I like honestly, I truly love my lifted family. I remember one time I posted on Instagram that I was tired of just like you know, when you're a dependable person and people know, oh, if I ask you, you're going to get it done. A lot of people ask you because they know you're going to get it done. And that gets tiring. And I posted one time that I was just tired of that. And one of the members of my listed family cashed out me $5 and said, buy yourself a coffee. <laughs> love. I love my family. Like, um, I had somebody else send me a Christmas card last year. Like, they just do little, little bitty stuff like that where I'm like, you know what, my community... That's why I call them my family, because I couldn't, like, Beyonce got her beehive. I could have gave them some name that felt unconnected, but these are really my family. I'm telling y'all how I felt in some of the darkest moments in my life. How much closer do we need to be? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. this is them. Okay. So, since we tapped on that a little bit, uh, how did your business actually start to grow? Because, you see, we got the lifted family and all that. Like, when you started, I'm sure you didn't have all that. So how did it actually start to build up where you start saying like, oh, I'm seeing some traction? Okay. So I would say um, now, it's so my bit, my thing, I started Keep It Vertical with a hat. I, I, I got a hat that said Keep It Vertical after I decided what the pillars meant for me. And somebody asked me if they could buy that hat off of me. And I was like, what? So I would say that my business, it started with like a spark because I initially just, I knew what it meant to me. And I wanted it on a hat until I decided what the hell I was going to do with it. And somebody asked to buy that hat off of me. And so I could say I started off with like a little fire because that's not why I bought the hat. I bought it because I decided what it meant to me. And from there, I got T-shirts made. And I would say, I, I think the moment it started building up the way that it did, I would say when, when I got my collaboration with the mayor, um, because of the exposure that it brought from that. But the most traction that I get still to this day is when my feet are on the goddamn ground and I am vending at pop-up shops. Mm. So I know that I have a lot of business owners that be trying to avoid the people at all costs, but you can't. Like, because like, the thing, like I can say, the thing about my business or the thing about business sometimes is like you have those moments where it's like, roll, roll, roll fast and everything is going. And then sometimes it just goes really slow. And what I've done and when I found that my business was gaining the most traction and rev and heat in these streets is when I'm outside boots on the ground doing a vending event, like outside talking to the people. Um, so I could say the the most traction I got, I started to boom after my collaboration with the mayor. Um, and then I keep booming every time I go outside, I put my foot on the ground and I do a vending event partnering with somebody else, which leads me to the fact that I got one coming up next weekend. <laughs> Tell us about it. Tell yeah, us go about ahead, it. shout it out. Tell the people where to go, how to find you. Yeah, so uh, next weekend, it's the role at DTLA is having what's called Small Business Saturday. And so we're going to have an LA original 
section, which consists of different brands that I spoke about earlier that collaborated with the mayor and their business that are started in LA. And it's going to be from the 27th and to the 28th from 12 o'clock to 5 p.m. at the Row in downtown LA. And it's really, really big, y'all. They have like 50 food trucks. It's hundreds of vendors outside. It's a really big, amazing event. It's called Small Business Weekend at the Row. How do you how do you find these these uh, vendors for people who don't know and are looking to like they have a product, they have something to sell and they just don't know how to get out of there, get out there besides just standing on the corner. How do you find these places? I'm going to tell you all a secret that nobody told me now. Most vending events that I find is obviously on like Instagram or like in this particular one, people reach out to me. But a big secret for you, if you're trying to find events, go on Eventbrite. Go on Eventbrite and type in, um, I can't even, type in business or type in like club podcasting. And all of the local events that are happening in your neighborhood regarding podcasting and fashion will pop up. And you can always, always go through and read about the event. And most events need vendors depending on the nature of that event. So you'll see that they're looking for vendors or they're looking for sponsors. And that's the way that I tell people to connect with people outside of their circle. Go on Eventbrite, type the type of event. For example, um, and this is, not, this is not necessarily related, but it's still business work. I have a friend that, um, that does boudoir shoots. She does like sexy photos. And she was saying that she needed to find different people to collaborate with in business. I took her on Eventbrite. I typed in boudoir work, boudoir, work, boudoir photos hundreds of events started popping up and she said wow i never knew these things existed wow. and you won't and if you keep looking in your neighborhood to find it sometimes you won't so go on event right look at that event and most times you can find a sponsor you can find a contact person you can find somebody to email and most people are lucky to have you and even if you can't come out physically ask people if they need vendors to put their business cards in there i just want to put my business cards in your event and sponsor it let me sponsor your gift bag I've sponsored gift bags for events in Louisiana. I've never been to Louisiana, mm. but my merchandise has. So do little things like that that get you outside of your bubble and the people that you know. You finna have a lot of people start new businesses. You, you yeah, but, but serious game. It's gonna be like six hundred new businesses in two days. But when you when you go when you go to these vending places, uh, for people who might not know, do do they charge you? Is it free sometimes? Is it free all the time? Because I know some people that put stuff together, and usually to it costs for the event space. So they'll charge like fifty dollars or something like that. Service fee. Most times it does. Yeah, most times it does cost unless you know that person. Um or if sometimes I've seen a lot of free ones, um, but most times they cost. But I mean, I'd be telling people like the investment you put into your business is the same. The way that you approach your business is the way that your customers are going to approach you. So if I'm going to a vendor and I'm trying to buy something and I'm asking for a discount on these shirts or these hats that I'm about to get stitched up and sell, then I can't be mad when a customer come at me trying to look at a discount for these hats that I just got stitched up to sell. Like, if I approach people looking for a discount every time they're trying to do work for me that I'm trying to give to my customer, then my customer is going to approach me with that same energy that I approached the vendor at to buy the shit. So you can't be afraid to invest and spend money on your business and yourself. Because the thing is, if you spend $50 at that vendor table, then you need to make sure your ass is willing to do $50 worth of work, whether it means talking to people, passing out business cards, make your $50 work for you. Because the only person that's going to make it or break the $50 that you spent is you. Once you get in that room, you determine if you're going to walk around and speak to everybody or not. If you want your money to go to waste, then don't. Just sit there and wait for somebody to walk up to you. <laughs> That's facts. All right, Tell so, them the uh, truth. Let's break it down a little bit more. So uh, how did you get the materials and all that type of stuff? Because this type of, this type of stuff ain't free. It don't just pop up out of thin air. So where did you get all the, the money for the materials, like the shirts and the hats? You are you know, asking secrets. All right, so I'm going to draw some game on here for y'all that I have never dropped in person. I actually could, I could drop a class on this entire business model. Um, now my business model is a model referred to as drop shipping. Drop shipping is the cheapest way to start a business if you have no money. The, a month after I launched my business, I was homeless. I was dealing with homelessness for six years of my life. So I had to start a business with a business model that did not require that I hold inventory. The way that drop shipping works, if Anthony has a hundred bikes and his bikes are $20, 
I can, and he wants to, he holds them and he ships them and he makes them. He makes bikes, but he just has a business making bikes and he'll ship them to whoever. The way that drop shipping works is I say, Jemana Career has a bike business and my bikes are $40. And when somebody buys a bike from me, Anthony will take his $20 bike and ship it to my customer for me. I never see the bike. And I give him the $20 for his bike and I take the $20 for profit. So that's how drop shipping works. Drop shipping works where somebody else just holds your product. Somebody else ships it out for you. Somebody else manufactures it for you. You design it, you list it on your website, and you sell it, and you market it. You don't hold it. You never have to see that shit in your life. I buy all of my things for quality purposes, and the company that I work with is local, so I can drive to their office to go look at any new products that, I, that they have. The con with drop shipping, if there be one, is that you can only work within the range of products that your manufacturer offers. The pro is my manufacturer offers everything. So that's why I have t-shirts, mugs, bathing suits, kids clothes. Like you just find a drop shipper that offers a product you want. If you want it custom, you have to go with a specific drop shipper. But these people that are selling like, like uh, coffee makers online, 90% of the time, they're being shipped from a warehouse that they never, ever go to, that they never, ever see because it's being drop shipped. That was some real Ooh. game right there. Yeah, she had some game. She had some <laughs> game for him. She was not playing. I, I told you, I said, I'm going to drop some game. I've never, I've never spoke about my business model, but with this being a business podcast, it's appropriate that people know that. Because um, like I said, when I first started my business, um, a month afterwards, I became homeless. And so I know a lot of people that are like struggling and being like, well, how can I start a business in this state? You don't need money to drop ship because you don't pay for the product until the product gets sold. <laughs> Okay. I don't pay for nothing until somebody buys it from me. A customer will buy the shirt. I pay for the shirt. The shirt gets shipped out. I get the whole cost of the order. If the order costs, if the order costs twenty dollars, I pay ten dollars, and they give me the twenty dollars. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Is there like a delay with that? Sometimes maybe it takes longer if you if you drop ship when the customer's trying to get it. No. Now, I mean, that, and that's the thing down your manufacturer. My manufacturer is really quick, and my manufacturer has warehouses all over the world. Like, we have them in Europe, which then it expands your shipping place. We have some in New Jersey. We have one here. That's, oh, that's perfect, beautiful. and that's really good information. Okay. Now, let's move Talk on to this episode. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole episode. That's why I'm like, let's go. We, 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 we could have you back and have you have you given some more. Now, a lot of people can't get as deep as they want to because, you know, it's, it's a lot to get into. Yeah, that's true. Just scratching the surface. All right, now let's run through the paperwork real quick. Uh, when did you actually decide to start getting your paperwork? And like, like tax like, forms? I'm taking you this mean? more serious. Oh my God. Okay, now I started off paperwork first. Like, I was just like, I'm going to do a business. I'm going to do it legitimately. I never tell anybody to do that anymore. Um, because you could start off with paperwork for a business that you're not even sure you're going to run. You don't even know necessarily what to do. When you legalize a business, there are $800 worth of taxes waiting for you every single year. Like you have That's to pay. That's if you do an LLC, right? If you do an LLC, absolutely, which I, which I did. Um, but I didn't, I just started off paperwork first because I wanted to be legal and right. Um, because I didn't, and I didn't know about the $800 taxes when I started, I just knew paperwork. So I don't suggest that people start off paperwork first because there's so much stuff that comes with that that you have to, like, it, like I started off paperwork before products first. Like, that's where I was at, um, which to me um, works because I, I kept my business. But if that's not, you know, if you're just trying something, you don't want to be responsible for that $800 because you had an idea that you're not going to like a month later. Um, and there's so much research that has to be done before you just start doing paperwork. Now, I, I, EIN, I would say get because I've gotten an EIN for a business that I didn't necessarily keep and an EIN is free and it takes five minutes to do and it allows you to get uh, phone lines and business accounts and a business bank account and you could get hundreds and thousands not not suggesting you do that but you can get hundreds of EINs over and over and over so that's something that's the that's a quick paperwork thing you could do to legit to like to solidify your business in the very beginning stages that's not costly that I would suggest before getting an LLC and all that other stuff because that bounds you to taxes and money and paperwork that you probably won't understand for an idea you might not keep up with so um 
I did paperwork first, but I would tell somebody to run with their business ideas for a minute, you know, make sure this is what you're going to do and stick with before you solidify yourself to that particular $800 payment. Yeah. <laughs> and what you start towards you know. with LLC? Mm-hmm. I started mine with an LLC. I heard if you do sole proprietorship, it, they don't charge you that 800 But then yeah. they can come after you if you get yeah, see. I, I don't want to do that because I, I don't want nobody to come after me. And then I knew that when I would go to business uh, classes, they always say that you get an LLC as like an umbrella. Because if you ever look at like Snickers or M&M's, Snickers and M&M's is owned by the Mars Company, which is the LLC that has a DBA in Snickers, that has a DBA in Twix, that has a DBA in M&M's. So this LLC is an umbrella company to do business under the name of multiple companies. And I got my LLC starting off knowing that I wanted to eventually branch off into whatever the hell I was going to do. Cause I just knew I wanted to do a bunch of stuff. I'm like, I can speak, I can sell clothes, I could do whatever. And I didn't want to limit myself. So I didn't do so proprietor because I wanted that legal protection also that comes with having an LLC. That is beautiful. You got the breakdown. How did you find out about the uh, sn- uh, Snickers and Twix? How they had the LLC and the branching off DBAs. That's beautiful information right there. I went to, uh, I was so like, I, I would go to a lot of business conferences. I would go to, because I freelanced and I would work all these conventions, I started knowing, I, that's when I realized, like, damn, they got conventions going on at the Staples Center damn near every day, like, about something completely different. So I just started going. Like, um, I remember, I forgot that bald-headed uh, Damon, Raymond something, the little, little bald-headed short black man, but he would do conventions at the Staples Center all the time. Um and all these businessmen would come out here and they would do, and they're free, like they're so free, but people just don't know about them. They'll have the Wealth Expo where they talk about money and crypto. And I've seen like Tony Robbins speak one time because I was freelancing at an event. So I just started going to business events in my neighborhood, but they were always 90% of the time they were like happening at the Staples Center. Um which then tells people to go to Eventbrite <laughs> and find these free business things. So it was a guy. It was a guy from Shark Tank. That's what it, it was. One of the guys from Shark Tank, and he would have. You talking little, about Dame Dash. Is no, it, Dame is John. He, Dame and John. Raymond, what's his name? Raymond. Damon John for the dude who made Fubu. That's his name. That's a, that's what I was okay, thinking I about too. And about then the guy, guy from Shark Tank. That's that's what I was thinking about. He would have conventions. And this was like years ago. And and when you do one, your name is in their email. So they would send me tickets in the mail for these free business conventions every time they had one because I just went to one. Ooh. I went to one of his before. Yeah, I was supposed to Those go to one, but I did not go. They was trying to sell me a they was trying to sell me into uh, doing my business for me type thing though. I mean, and of course, though, because why else would they have a free webinar if not to tell yeah. you on something different? You just go, get what the hell you need, know they're going to try to sell you, and then that be it, you know? Like, they try to sell you y'all going to have to try to sell me. Yeah, yeah, that's what I went for, too, just for the information. They get Everybody's trying to make money, though. All right, that's so true. let's jump into, uh, why did you choose this field to work? Why this field right here? Because we already know the trials and tribulations you went through. Like, what made you zone in on this field? I, when I struggle with depression and suicidal thoughts, most of the times, and a lot of the times, I was alone. If I had a t-shirt, a phone case, if I had a button, if I had a pair of socks, if I had something on me that told me to keep my head up, that would have been more helpful than me feeling alone, my clothes look alone. Like, I started with clothing because I feel like that's something personal to you. Even if you don't tell nobody what keep it vertical means when you have your shirt on, even if you don't tell nobody what the images mean that you have on your shirt. If you look in the mirror and you see this positive image on your shirt, you know what the fuck that means to you. You know that saying, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, keep your spirit lifted. And even if you explain to nobody else what you got going on, there's something with you in any random moment. Because you don't know when something's going to happen. Like, unfortunately, my friend didn't know that she was going to get that news about somebody passing the day she wore her Keep It Vertical shirt. But that's exactly why I started it. And I started with clothes. They're personal. They're something you have on you. You can look down at your feet and see your socks. And you can see Keep It Vertical. And that could be uplifting to you. That could make you feel better. That could be that small little bit of, like, keep your head up that you need all day. I went through a horrible breakup when I was in high school and I got an arrow pointed up 
and the words keep the faith tatted on my ankle so that if I look down because I, I was so depressed, every time I would look at my ankle, the arrow would be pointing up and I would I would be reminded to keep my head up. So I did something like that on my body with a tattoo. So I knew I could just do it with clothes too. Like I ain't gonna tell everybody to get a tattoo, but buy a shirt, get a sock. Like you need this message too. And that's why I started it. Yeah, that's very powerful. I'll read this. Yeah. Uh, well, I just finished this book called The Power of the Subconscious Mind. And that's kind of like um, along the lines where he what he talks about in the book, like the imagery and the things that you have, your, your eyes are the windows to the soul and what you hear and what you ingest, your subconscious will, it's not going to argue with you. It's going to automatically react to whatever you're putting in yourself. So if you walk around calling yourself stupid all the time or saying things about your subconscious, is not going to argue with you. You're just going to really be stupid. You know, right. you walk around. Okay. draw that energy to you to make you smarter you tell yourself i'm gonna get a million dollars i'm a business person you're gonna draw that to you and then you won't even see it happen like um when you go to sleep your body you still breathe your fingernails still like you have powers in you that are working constantly without you having to do it and our job and then our the real power we have is that we have the ability that while we're conscious and that we can we have the ability to control what we think about we have yeah. that ability. We can tell our, as soon as we have a bad thought, we have the ability to tell ourselves, all right, I'm not going to think about it that way. I'm not going to. And then um, I was just telling, uh, I was telling Kevin last night, my God, brother, I was telling him last night, like even people that do bad things to you and, and you, you have some type of ill will or something like that, you have to get rid of that because you'll draw that energy back to yourself. Um, <clears throat> and that's the purpose of forgiving people because, and then it, it how he explained it, it's sometimes even selfish because you're doing it not necessarily, you're wishing them well, not necessarily because you just want to wish them well, because you want the good energy reciprocated back to you. So you're not necessarily doing it like I want to see them. In, you, I really want to see you get a million dollars because I want to give you nothing but good energy because whatever you give out, you get back. You know, if, 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 for example, a guy who does me wrong. And I go and tell everybody, like, if, as soon as they bring him up, man, I can't stand this dude. I can't stand this. And next thing you know, it gets back to him. And he'd tell his cousin. And they tell him, and now they want to fight me. As opposed to they bring this dude up. He did something to me. You know what? I wish that dude well. And then now the dude sick thinks that he remembers what he's done to you. He thinks in his head, like, I did all this to this dude. And all he got to do is say something good about me. Hey, bro, do you need my help, dude? And it's just, it's always reciprocated. So that's very important. I'm down with your brand. That's, I, that's beautiful. Thank you. What's the name of that book? It's The Power of Subconscious Mind by uh, Murphy. Let me look it up real quick. The book, I listen to, to everything audiobook. It's free on YouTube. And I was just saying I need to get back into audiobooks because I have this horrible habit of like starting books and then I never finish it. And I and I get to the end. Like I get to the end. Like what, why do we do that, Anthony? Why do, do you also wait till you get to the end? Yeah. I get very close to the end right. and just be like, <laughs> I'll get back to it. It was getting what? real good. I'm going to save it right there and never pick it up again. I know it's exactly not, what you're talking about. Like it. like, it's not that it's not a good book. I just, Man, I don't I'm know. I think book. it's tricky of us, Anthony. I think we think we know everything, so we put the shit down. We have to stop doing <laughs> Yeah, get in. Hey, get into the audios, man. I, I honestly, it took this book, it was like six hours. But I only listen to it like when I drive or something like that, just trying to put positive stuff in me. So that way when I because sometimes like I'll watch a movie or I listen to a song I don't even like. And then I'll, I'll know the words like I, why do I know the words to this damn song? It's like already song. embedded in my subconscious, you know, I'm like, I hate this song, but I could recite every word. To the That's lyrics. What I did with that uh, that audio book you told me about. He told me about an audio book called The Prince and. It was tearing my mind up. Like, oh, I need to look at the world differently. Like, sometimes you don't even way. have to really pay attention to it like that hard. You're you're, you're already ingesting it, you know? Yeah, because it's stories and it's just like boom, 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 boom. All right, but we're getting off track a little bit. Let's jump back into it and let's get into how you advertise yourself. Whew. Okay, so I advertise myself through multiple channels. I have a lifted, I have an email list. I do social media. So I have an Instagram, I have a Facebook. There are uh, so many companies that do like network marketing. I, I won't necessarily say for you, but there's an app called, 
I think, or the company called Alignable.com. And Alignable.com is a, it's like a Facebook with a bunch of different businesses, but they put you in these little communities with like local people in your business and then they connect you. So if somebody made a business of fashion, they would be like, hey, Joe, there's another fashion account local in your area. So it just like connects you with local businesses. And that's another form of marketing. Um, so I find different, uh, I would say apps and companies like that, that kind of help you connect with people outside of the apps that we're so familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um, I also do a lot of Facebook groups. Facebook groups are very, very, very helpful, especially if you follow the ones that allow you to post your link and talk about your business. I tell people, especially right now, my brand is doing what we call Not Alone November. Every month, I pick a theme to focus on. So this month, we're focusing on combating loneliness. And I'm giving people tips and tricks and things they can do to aid them in not feeling the holiday blues this season. And I was recently talking about the power of virtual community. Virtual community, I, um, there was a girl on Facebook that asked the question of like how to start a business. And I just wrote her in the comments, didn't know her. Because I answered her question, she went on my website and bought a hat. So do not underestimate the power of a virtual community. Um, I do a lot of um, advertising on Facebook from that and uh, vending events, pop-ups, partnerships, um, podcast interviews, when people ask you to show up and be there, say yes. And um, I'm, re- I'm getting into Facebook ads. I've done Facebook ads before, um, just kind of playing around with it. And I'm getting into like the knowing of what I'm doing with that. And lastly, I would say the last way that I market myself now outside of my business, I teach workplace violence classes which means I teach nurses and doctors, well, not doctors, I teach nurses and medical staff how to protect themselves against psych patients using negotiation, de-escalation, and self-defense. So I teach people how to talk to people that are angry and how to de-escalate. But because that's what I do by profession, I also tell my students what I do by, like, my real life. Like, I tell y'all, like, outside outside of this, I also have a positive lifestyle brand, and I'm marketing myself at work. Ooh, I see why everybody was telling you you need to go into business. Cause man, you got, and you got a life outside of this? That's <laughs> ridiculous. I teach workplace violence classes, but I only teach about five to five to six classes a month. But I mean, I still I got students and stuff, and I got a grade paper. <laughs> that sounds heavy. Okay. So <laughs> How about your advertising? Oh, excuse me. How about your advertisement versus when you started versus now? Like, what's the trade up? Is it like a big difference or is it just? It's a significant difference. I didn't advertise at all when I first started. My advertising was, hey, y'all, I got a business and I'm posting it on Facebook and I'm posting it on Instagram. Like, I thought that that was all advertising was. I didn't understand the power in building an email community and how to build an email community. And I didn't really want to do vending events when I first started. Like, I didn't want to, I was like, I got a strictly online brand. I sell clothes online. And then I realized nobody's going to buy anything they can't really see. And they're not going to buy it in bulk and buy it with the way, buy it with the excitement you want them to buy it with sometimes without seeing it. And I needed to know what did people think about my product? Do you like how it feels? So even as a partic- as, even as a strictly online business, I had to force myself to go outside because people needed to see what I was, what I was selling. So now I do pop-up shops all, like I try to do one at least once a month. Um, it was hard, obviously, with COVID, but because we're getting back, I'm trying to at least do once every month or at least once a quarter every three months. And I didn't do that at first. So now I, I'm a lot more comfortable marketing myself because at first I just felt like I was selling myself. Like, I'm like, hey, y'all buy me. And, you know, and that was awkward. <laughs> right. But I, I get it now. now. <laughs> okay. So do you feel like most of your customers come from advertisement or another source like word of mouth or something like that? I think most of my customers come from word of mouth um, because I get, I have people that like my sister lives in Washington and she calls me and asks me to send her business cards because people compliment her when she wears her keep it vertical out in Washington all the time. So a lot of people come from, I, I, I would say, I think they come from somebody that I know whether I know them like, like directly or not. Like my sister gets a compliment in the grocery store, gives somebody my business card. So that's why I would say I think it's word of mouth. Um, I have an auntie in Chicago that I send my business cards to because she passes them out to people at her job. I have like little pockets of people that like go out and Mary Kay <laughs> for me now. So I think it's 
word of mouth to some degree because I have so many people out here doing that for me. That's super dope. That's super dope. I'm loving it. You killing it. You are. I love my family. I'm so grateful. <laughs> yeah, they holding it together, man. They they keeping this thing tight knit. And I like how you got other people going on doing the same thing that you were doing in the very beginning. Like, that's real smooth. Just build the, the company to a whole nother level. You might be Mary Kay in a few years. You never know. Hey, I thought about it. My auntie asked me one time if I had a catalog. I was like, a catalog? No, God damn it! but I guess I got to make one. <laughs> yeah, give me a week or two. Catalog coming. Yeah. Shoot, hold my blood. <laughs> <laughs> I right, see some I see some pictures on, on, on Instagram where you do like photography and stuff too. Or you, do you do all, like all the shooting and stuff for your company yourself? No. Okay, so God is good because I was in, in my in my hardness from growing up the way that I grew up, I never used to be able to ask for help. I now rely on a team of people. I have what is called content day. And I bring together all of my friends. I bring together other business owners. And I, the first time I did it, I rented out a hotel. The second time I did it, I rented out a studio. And we all come together and we take pictures and create content for our businesses. So I have a photographer, Milky Media. Shout out to Milky Media. She has been like the official Keep It Vertical photographer for the past two to three years. And she does 90 to 100 percent of my shot i may have like one picture that she didn't take mm -hmm. and um the pictures come from content day when we all get together and we all take pictures now the next time i have one i'll invite y'all out because y'all could just take pictures for flyers and advertisements requesting for people to come out to your podcast you could like we literally bring props up everything i bring a suitcase honestly i'm in my car but i just did another the content day and that's a big ass box full of clothes but i bring jackets hats glasses and we just get dressed and we take pictures all throughout the studio or the hotel for my business for other people's business for other brands and we just get what we need to market our businesses on the internet and that's where my photos come from um it's our content day so would you consider her like an outsource because sometimes people the, the you bring you brought up uh having a team and stuff like that in business and sometimes uh, there's we can't always do everything as a business owner, as a person of business. So we will have to outsource. So would you consider her someone like an outsource partner? I would consider her a partner partner. Oh, but I mean, uh, but that's because my relationship with her is deeper than like her just doing photography. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to business, she's one of the people that I that I co conspirate with. Mm -hmm. Like we'd be bouncing off like ha 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 demonic ideas. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I would say, um, and I say like demonic ideas for their shit that like my cousins are supposed to know, like the secret stuff. <laughs> um, so I would consider her a partner partner. Uh, but an outsource partner would be like the person that made my graphics. Um, or the I, drop shipper. I, Mm -hmm, or my drop shipper. Um, there's a website. This is the last. Pro this is the last little free gem y'all gonna get. No, I'm just kidding. It's called Fiverr.com. It was Fiverr, and Fiverr uh, started off as a website where you could pay anybody five dollars to do anything. I got my graphics made for Keep It Vertical on Fiverr. Cost me thirty five dollars, and I've made that hundreds of times over. Yeah, That's Fiverr's so a big one. People so don't really pay attention to that one. That's true. Isn't That's that crazy? Important. That is very important, listeners. So, uh, how did you guys actually start to organize? Uh, what did you call it again? Merch day. Content day. Content day. I love it. Content, content day. day. How did you guys start to organize <laughs> content day? Like, whose idea the, was that? The very first content day happened because Mastercard reached out to me and asked me to teach a hour long workshop called Positivity All Day. Within this workshop, MasterCard requested that I send out positivity kits um, to the people that pay for my workshop. Now, within this positivity kit, because I was talking about ways to increase your positive feelings all day, one of the things that I suggested people do was to stretch in the morning. And I wanted to be able to give people a poster of me stretching and doing yoga poses in the morning because I've always wanted to be on somebody's wall. I had dreams of being like a famous singer when I was little. So I was like, here's my opportunity to get a poster. So I wanted to make a poster of me doing yoga poses to give to people inside of their positivity kit, but I didn't have any of those. So I found a hotel. I rented out a hotel and I told my homegirl, we're going to come here to take these pictures for this MasterCard poster. But since I'm going to be here for two days, Let's just make one of these days a day where we just do a photo shoot for everybody. 
Like, I need content, you need content, let's do it. So it started off because I had to fulfill this MasterCard box, but I've actually had two. Well, I've had another one, which was just about a week ago since then. So I, that was probably about six months ago. So at this point, I, I'll say I have content day every quarter, and it just started because MasterCard needed me to create that opportunity for my, that experience for my guests. The MasterCard give you a, a MasterCard with a, a million dollar limit? <laughs> MasterCard gave me some money. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> MasterCard gave me more money than I've ever been paid to do anything in my life. And all they wanted me to do was speak for an hour. Because MasterCard paid me as much as they paid me, and I'm going to say it was a few hundreds, like some hundreds, um, they paid me hundreds of dollars to speak for an hour about how you can increase your positive feelings all day, which I'm now turning into a master class so I can be paid hundreds and thousands of dollars multiple times mm -hmm. over because mm -hmm. I've been paid hundreds of dollars once. That's okay. right. That's right. Keep that's going. Right. Yeah. yeah. Easy money. Got to keep it going, you know? Like, I think Soldier Boy said when he made his first million dollars, he said, oh, so that's what I got to do to make a million dollars? I'm going to just do it again. And that's how I feel. <laughs> Yeah. Y'all paid me X thousands of dollars to teach a class for an hour. I've never been paid a thousand dollars to teach for an hour. I was like, I need to make that money over and over and over and over. And He's it was working, I'll tell you that. Thank you. Thank you. I God willing, it's go it's gonna really it's gonna work the way I want it to work. You feel me? Absolutely. Uh and no, I'm gonna let you take it, Vic. Go ahead. Uh, let's see what time, what time we got out. Yeah, we already almost at, uh, 320. So we're going to jump right into the speed round. Um, the speed rounds is a little fun thing. Uh, let's see what I'm going to ask you. Uh, let's just, let's just keep it simple. Let's go top five movies of all time in your book. <laughs> okay, top five movies of all time. The first one that popped in my head is White Chicks. White Chicks is hilarious. One of my favorite <laughs> movies in the damn world. Um, <laughs> Second movie, best movie of all time, or one of the best movies of all time, The Night, the Nightmare Before Christmas. I watch that shit every Christmas or every Halloween because Tim Burton did his shit. Um, another one, I can't say that this is the greatest movie of all time, but this is one of the greatest movies that I've recently watched will be The Harder They Fall. Um, shout out to oh, Netflix and Jay-Z. And good. Boom, boom, boom. I love it's black cool. cowboys. So I like good. to see black I love to see black people doing different stuff. So I was like, yeah, pow, pow. Um, and uh, I can't think of two other ones right now. So I will say something that I recently watched that had me dying was I watched Martin Lord Do So Crazy stand up all over again. <laughs> um, had me dying like I never watched it before. And because we're talking TV, a series that I could just watch over and over and over, greatest series of all time, Boondocks. Boom, bang, bing, bang, bing. <laughs> you, if you like stand up, you gotta listen to Bernie Mac's old stuff. Whenever I watch Bernie Mac, like, oh my God, I don't know why how this dude can make me die laughing like that. And like, I laugh like I've never seen it before. Like yeah. when I was watching Martin Lord, you so crazy. I'm laughing like an adult. Like when I was a kid, it was funny, but now I'm grown. I'm like, I know what you mean. You really man. get it. Yeah. <laughs> you really, really get it. All right. I like uh, how we lean towards the comedians real quick. Let's go uh top three comedians. That's a good one. That's well, good I'm gonna say um, Dave Chappelle. I, oh, I, I don't care what nobody gotta say. Dave Chappelle Period. off that because I love. I watched Chappelle show as a kid. My second favorite comedian. Now this is a collection of people, but these are some of the funniest people in the world to me. The writers of South Park. Whoever the fuck, those are my favorite comedian group. The writers of South Park are. I love South Park, and so to me. All those people in the writer room are my favorite comedians. And then I would have to say Dave Chappelle, the writers of South Park. Now, uh, he's funny, but he's not like comedian funny. Jamie Foxx is one of my favorite people, but I'm going to have to say Martin Lawrence because Martin Lawrence is hilarious. That's a good pick. That's a good pick. I want to tap in on the comedians. I want to get my comedians. I'm going to go yeah. uh, I'm gonna go Bernie Mac number one. I'm doing mine in order, too. Then I'm going to go Dave Chappelle and then... uh. I want to say Kevin Hart, man, but I don't know if I can give it to him. I don't know. It's the yeah. last spot can go to a lot of different people. I'm gonna give it to Kevin Hart because this is. I remember Anthony. You remember you was watching um, 
the the one of his specials in the library when we was way younger and Anthony was in there watching that. He's supposed to be quiet. This nigga in the, in the library <laughs> cracking up on the computer with the headphones on. I'm like, what is so funny, bro? You making all this damn noise. I went home and watched it and was rolling. I couldn't, like, he was laughing for a reason. Not the library. What's yours, Anthony? All right, my it's top big three. Little, oh. Damn, I kind of want more than three. Mm -hmm. No, you got to just do three because I could have gave all you right. more. Yeah, all right. Top three. We're going to go Dave Chappelle. He's the GOAT. Nobody's funnier. I watch absolutely everything that he drops. Everything. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going Wayne's Brothers, man. Them niggas are hilarious. <laughs> Wayne's Brothers. Come on now. I, that. I support that. She and that's go coincide with her her top movies, white chicks, right yeah, there. Not lying. <laughs> yep, yep. Wayne's brothers, they that, that's probably what's got my mind stern because they, they the goats, they've been doing this for too long. Like, Real talk, I agree. And they still hilarious. They get a little too outlandish sometimes, but that's cool. They know how to use that whole yeah, they be showing their booty and stuff, some crazy type shit like that. They sometimes. know how to use every avenue of comedy, and you gotta respect it. Real talk. <clears throat> and Let's go with like a nostalgic type. I'm going to go Red Fox because he hilarious. He got them deep kind of, he going to make you think. She I don't know about Richard Pryor. You don't know about Red Fox. Oh, it's old. He's super old. old. He's the beginning. He's Richard Pryor type. I said I thought he was going to say Richard Pryor. I know who Red Fox is. I said I thought he was going to say Richard Pryor. Red Fox is who Richard Pryor looked up to. So ah. Red Fox came before Richard Pryor. And then oh. most of their stuff was just like, uh, most of his stuff is like, Back then, it was a little different, so it was like shock value types. Motherfucker, shit, motherfucker, goddamn, like this. And then to this, it's funny. I was, it's it, it is funny, but that's his comedy. Like you, stupid motherfucking bitch, shut up, old mother. Like, they that's deep it. too. They get deep too. Like they get said, deep. They get deep. He had a, a joke about like race and colors, and he was all like, "Oh yeah, you can't say all black people is this. You can't say they that." Cause we got dark chocolate, mocha, latte, and he just went through a whole long list of it. I'm it like, is though. a genius. Hey. It All is. right, but let's keep this going. The speed round's supposed to be quick. We're going too slow. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm gonna go. Which one? And then I don't have no general. Just generally, just if you had to okay. pick one, Nicki Minaj or Cardi B. Nicki, period. Oh, Ooh. Lord, you said that yes, that was fast. That was a real rounder. <laughs> okay, Lil Baby or Dub Baby? That's another good one. Lil Baby. She on my team. That's what I like. <laughs> Lil Baby my money, and there's no controversial or issues with him. Lil Baby. And I want to hear about the money. Hold on, I don't want to take this over. You go ahead, Vic. You you get it. You shoot a couple in there. All right, I'm gonna do a real generic. Uh, just we're gonna we're gonna tap in a little bit from what what she told us. So, uh, what you giving it, Palmdale or or L.A.? <laughs> um, if I had a family, Palmdale. Me, just just out here, L.A. Boom, bing, bang, bleasy. Um, I know I got one in the back of my zone. Um, your favorite actress. An actor, the, the 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 best actor and best actress out here that you would that you would get. So man and woman. Oh, see, I don't even know if I watch enough TV to say my favorite actress. Um, I would probably say actor. It would just have to be Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx is just like my favorite. He's like one of my favorite people of all time in the world and like everything that he does. <laughs> um, yeah, he so did. I'm gonna just have to say I'm gonna just have to say him off rip. Um, actress. I don't know, but I'm watching a show with Yaya right now that was with American Next Top Model, and I didn't realize she was such a great actress. Um, so I'm just gonna give her her props for this round. I got a I got an actress that I think you would you would give that slot to that kind of like fits your personality. I'm gonna say Issa Rae for you. That was gonna be my choice, man. I was already thinking <laughs> Issa Rae. That, I'm gonna give you Issa Rae. Out I think you and Issa Rae will be like best friends type shit. Can't call. Let's call her. Okay, and actually, the jungles where she shot that show at, I was born in the jungles. So when I uh, when I was born, I and I used to go to Hillcrest right down the street. My dad would take me to Jim Gilliam all the time. So when I was born in LA, I was raised um, up until I went into foster care around that area in the jungles. 
And for those who don't know what Jungles is, if you ever watch Training Day, which is on my uh, top five greatest movies of all time, that's where they was at. That's where that's where uh, they went to get Denzel from up out of where the white boy, not they. Oh, but see, the nigga and turned on the nigga. He's a red lid for my ladies. If you ain't seen Training Day or you don't remember, because I don't remember Training Day enough. What? Um, I know. Don't, don't, don't. Don't, <laughs> don't. 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 this episode because I don't remember your top five favorite movies of all time. Oh, um, so man. I remember my Insecure. It's you right have to watch Training Day. Crenshaw it's Mall, on Netflix. Krispy Kreme's Donuts. Yeah, right there. You can't miss it. Martin Luther King Day. Uh, pr- Try not to walk through there. <laughs> Prince ratio 10 out of 10 okay y'all press ratio the 10 out of 10 on Martin Luther King day just stay in the yeah. house yeah try not to walk past and that area he named don't try not to walk past that Krispy Kreme they be at that little chicken spot right there and they <laughs> be a big large group of them there. <laughs> so if you look <laughs> like <laughs> something they ready to jump on they might jump on you just a hey, little LA uh, outside, street pack Stay right, safe, did I, everybody. Did I get my top five movies already? Did you do top five movies? I didn't do my top five. I just said that was one of my. I didn't do. Top you want me to do my top five? All right, my top five. I'm gonna go Train Day, <clears throat> Django Unchained, Baby Boy, Water Boy, and then, uh, what's my last one? Water Boy. Is Bad Boys. Boy. Sidebar, I called my sister today. I'm so sorry. I called my sister today, Vic. And when she said hello, I said, Water sucks. It really, really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, me, Anthony, and, and Jasmine, our sister, we know the whole lines to that whole fucking movie. That movie is hilarious. I was just at work quoting Water Boy. I was like, uh, Remember Bobby Boucher came to, uh, to the football game at halftime and won the, uh, the Super Bowl, do you? <laughs> I was rolling. That's my Thanks. movie, man. <laughs> so what's yours, man? Come on, shoot it before we get up out of here. All right, top five, top five, top five. Uh, I'm going to go Avatar, The Airbender. That's one, because I like that mystical type shit. Uh, yeah, I thought it sucked, too. <laughs> you don't like that one? Nah, I don't like that one. Hell no. They didn't even make Sokka funny. Yeah, exactly. Wait, which Avatar? Y'all, y'all talking about the Airbender or the, the blue one? No, you said no, airbender. airbender. Yeah, the airbender. That shit dope. Y'all didn't no, like that. I don't think they did. That show was really good as a cartoon. I don't think they did it justice with the movie. Well, I think I just like the idea of it. You know? Yeah. Come on, keep good. going. If you compare it to the cartoon, it's not. Keep going. Right, right, right. Okay. I can respect that. All right. I'm going to go Inception after that. That's a good one. Uh, Man, the harder they fall has been glued in my brain. And you're like the second or third You're the second or third person that said that. Yeah, people are feeling that movie. Uh, That makes me want to go towards like... I was going to say Django, but I feel like I'm stealing from Vic List. No, you Django, Django, Django is up there. <laughs> I love, and that's Jamie Foxx. That coincided with she said too. Right. Yeah, Jamie Cold out here in these streets. Damn, I'm thinking of all the Jamie Foxx movies now. Right when you said that, I was just like, you got- Hey, Jamie is a singer, a uh, uh, comedian. Uh, Oscar winning actor. This nigga does it all. Jack of all trades. Just tell him what to do, and he gonna do it. Okay. Right, that was three. Mhm. Mhm. Let's go. Uh, I'm gonna go. The Revenant. Love that movie. I love that movie too. Where he was fighting a bear. Yeah, that's the best. Scene. That's one of the top best scenes are ever done in a movie. Yeah, he went nuts, and he really did all that stuff too in the cold and all that. He really did that. Oh, they that's was, cool. They had people on yeah, the sidelines, like right the little paramedics. Stuff. They was all like, "Oh, let us help you." He was all like, "Nah, I want it to be real." Because he, was, yeah, that's how Leonardo DiCaprio is. That was deep. Mm. Hey man, what's the last one? What's the last one? I'm going belly. Oh, oh good one. Man. See, yeah, y'all made me want to revamp my list. I'm a just... I, it's subject to change. When you come back, you gonna come ready. It, it'll come. It, I, it, I'll change it when I come back. I'm gonna just say deeper vendetta and just laugh, and I'm gonna just dead that right. Yeah, there. when you come, cause mine changes every guest. Mine changes every guest. Oh yeah, V for Vendetta was my size. Remember, okay. remember the fifth of November, baby. Yeah. Come on now. I love that movie too. It was I should be that for Halloween next Halloween. You should. 
You should. And, I'm, and I like that both of you guys like Django because I, I don't like movies where they have like slaves and stuff in them. So I, it took me about a year to watch Django and somebody had told me it's not like it's not like that. Like I'm thinking it's like, you know, like slaves be a wit like I'm thinking it's like, like this twelve years of slave. Yeah. So when somebody it's was like, it's not like that. it's more comedic and somebody was like, watch, just watch it. I finally watched Django last year. Yeah, I have a hard time watching slave movies too. It's real uncomfortable and just cringy. Like I don't even want to watch you want to sock the next white person you see. It's but hey, but look. I'm glad you. I, I'm glad you brought that up. Afterwards, and I don't want to do that. I'm glad both of you brought that up because that is an important topic, especially because uh, I don't want to just do only black people on this on this show, but we we're catering to black people. Put it like that. And um, the main thing that black people have wrong with them is victim mentality. And Malcolm X said it best. If you if you look into your enemy to be your savior, you're in bad shape. You're in real yeah. bad shape. And I think that sometimes like slave movies and stuff like that are a reminder uh, to put us in our place. So I get what you're saying. But I also I also like to tap into them just to see like how we were really treated. You know what I'm saying? And how yeah. that relates to how we're treated today it's just a different form and it's morphed and stuff like that but that's that's a real good point why and it's kind of like on both sides there's two sides of that coin why you shouldn't and you should watch it because you don't like you like your company is about like imagery and you know uplifting yourself so obviously you wouldn't want to see no crap like that you know yeah. but on yeah, the on the real. other on the other hand and because that is playing to a full victim mentality it's like you're going to go out there and punch a white dude or something like that. You just totally played into that whole victim. Like you shouldn't be worried about yeah. them. You should be trying to be like Joe, starting your own business. We don't, we ain't worried about what y'all doing, what you did. We worried about what we doing. Nah, but right. just, oh, that a little bit further real quick. Uh, yeah, go ahead. They have other like stuff that they can make movies off of. Like I did a lot of research on this type of stuff. Like for example, Fort Moses. That was like, remember when Kanye was all like, oh yeah, it was a choice and all that and people went crazy. I did some research, like, let me see what this nigga talking about. And I found a lot of shit. It was a lot of rebellions back in the days and Fort Moses was a big rebellion. Spain came and sent soldiers over to help him because Spain came and took over a certain part of Florida or whatever. And then they left. And when they left, the white people came back and was like, oh, we taking this shit back. But the slaves that was still there fought them off. So Spain can come and like take their land. Like, oh no, this is y'all shit. We're gonna fight. Hopefully, y'all give us a little slice of this. And Spain got word that they was doing that. And they was all like, oh, we're gonna send y'all soldiers, teach y'all the language. And then after all that, boom, y'all set up. Y'all, y'all, you know, they can't really fuck with y'all no more. Y'all part of us and y'all know all this shit. And in that way, y'all could still have the movie that shows what y'all did to us, but then still show like the other side of that coin. Yeah, the fighters yeah, that I we did had. Fight back. And then the heroes Kanye that wasn't we had. crazy. Yeah, you we know? did have heroes and people that a lot of people like, they don't know it's a lot of people in Mexico too. Like a lot of black people because Mexico was, a lot of people fled to Mexico and then people don't, they don't get, a lot of people fled to Canada, fled north. And it's like, right. we got a lot of history that, that they don't depict and show in these movies and stuff. So I get what you're saying. And that goes right back in the CRT. The, uh, the shit that's going around with teaching the kids uh, black history in school right now. I forgot it was a critical race theory. Critical race theory, CRT. Yes, indeed. What you think about critical race theory, Joe? I, I, I'm just, I was tripping up for the, the like with the the idea that of them trying to remove certain elements of black history from school teachings. Like, why would yeah. you, why would you not want to? Uh, they, I mean, I'm also very mad right now about Kyle Rittenhouse, so I could just, I could. Woo! Just, let's not even talk about it. Start <laughs> <laughs> me today, because I will. I live right down the street from the Crypto.com Center. Don't get them place blown up, okay? Because I'm so upset about Kyle right now. I don't know what to do. <laughs> To, for him to get acquitted of every single thing is like I could see if they like try to play like oh he's gonna get ten years and he's not gonna get life or something but everything that was kind of like slap in the face. Oh, he walk oh, away man. with that's like nothing. nothing. You don't even no slap probation. Him nothing. You give him nothing. Yeah. This but is America's America. gonna do what America gonna do every time. America's on America every single time. I don't think he should have got life, but he should have did some jail time. Period. I think he should have got he, life. 
That, hey, I keep hearing that too. People like nigga, he should have got a life. Give him the like chair. That. Give he him the chair. <laughs> he had a he rifle executed the, the first guy. Shot was unarmed. Yeah, he executed the first guy. He shot the dude. He wasn't dead yet, and he put two more in his back. He executed the first guy, which is kind of. And then I'm like, but where does self defense come into that? And that's why that's that's the part I just don't get. I don't get why people are saying somebody said, um, and it was a black man. He said, "Your ability to defend yourself on America in America is on trial today." What? What? Self defense? Where? Okay, never mind. Hey, don't let a black man have any type of gun in his hand. He getting life in jail. He don't even got. Hey, he don't even got to kill nobody. If you shot that motherfucker, you getting life in jail. We don't have to have a gun. Let me walk down the street with this shit, okay? Yeah, it's Let me walk down the street just holding my coffee, and it's all black, and it looked like a revolver at the top. If you close your eyes and don't look, no motherfucker wear. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't lying. So, right, but man, we had a really good interview. Really good. I had a nice time chatting with y'all. <laughs> I knew it was gonna get deep. I had a feeling. I had a feeling it was gonna get deep. But yeah, it was very good talking to you. If you uh, if you want the people to know where you at, how to find you, go ahead, shout it out. Let them know how to reach you. And tell them about that book too. Oh yeah, absolutely. So you guys can find me at keytovertical.org, which is where I sell my book, Delicately Care for Savages, uh, DCFS. Also, I had a new a new T-shirt called Positivity that just dropped today. So shop with us, uh, keepitvertical.org again. If you sign up for our mailing list, you will get free shipping. So make sure you get that free shipping code. You can find me on Instagram at keepitvertical with one underscore and on Facebook at keepitvertical. Cha-ching, beautiful. We love having you. We, we got a good streak going because every guest so far has had a book written in some form or shape, whether it be a cookbook, a children's book. So, man, it's beautiful, man. I hope everyone is inspired by this. Anything else anybody got, shout it out. And other than that, we good to go. Till next time. All right. Have love and peace. Have me back. And I, I guess I'll get into the secrets of dropshipping. But we're going to have to charge for that episode because y'all need some coins out of offering this game to these we're people. We're going to do a tell- Patreon. We're going to start right. showing people. We're going to start showing people how to uh, get a seller's permit and all that type of crap. We're going to, we're going to, uh, I got, I got it flowing in my head. Right now, we're just trying to build content right now. So we need as many of you. If you got anybody you can send to us, send them. All we're trying to do is have a good conversation like we did with you right now. Oh, I got hella people. I got y'all. Send them on through. Okay. Most definitely. Right, Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming. H-N-I-C in this B. H-N-I-C in this B. <laughs> Come on now. So check us out. H-N-I-C. 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 Since you've been on the show, make sure you <laughs> like and subscribe because we mean as, need as many. I'm really counting on the guests. We're going to try to get more guests than, than followers at this joint. Light it up, okay. y'all. Thank you. All right, cool. All right, you ready, Ant? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right, we finna just jump right into it because we know we got a busy woman on our hands. <laughs> got nothing to do. But, uh, well, I do got something to do later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs>